All right, in this video, I'm gonna do a fork seal replacement on this 1990 EX500 Kawasaki. Now, this is gonna be the same as pretty much any standard conventional fork, except you gotta get past the goofy Kawasaki thing on here where they have this instead of a just a standard screw top cap, and that's why I have this two-arm puller. It'll allow me to depress this and pull that circlip out, which will allow me to pull the spring and whatnot out. I don't want to jump the gun yet because we're going to loosen the bolt on the damper first. This just keeps reminding me of the great American hero Burt Gummer in Tremors 3. What he says about the government, except I'm saying it about Kawasaki. You do what you always do. Find something simple and complicated. And that's what they've done. So before I push this in, and pull the circ clip out and eventually the spring. What I'm gonna do is loosen the damper rod bolt on the bottom. You could do this with uh, just an Allen, but I prefer to use this. Now, I'm not pulling it all the way out. I'm pulling it out a little bit because I won't have any tension on it later. I have full tension on it now. So I'll just break it loose with a six millimeter on an impact. I'll make sure I'm way in there. All right, so it's loose, it's all I need. It's gonna probably drip a bit, but it doesn't matter because this whole thing's gonna get messy. I would go and buy some towels. I'm actually gonna tighten it just a little bit. Okay, now let's go to the top. Okay, sorry if this doesn't shoot that well, but hopefully the concept makes sense. What I'm gonna do is put my arms over there and I'm gonna push this down. It will then allow me to get this circlip out I learned about this when I was messing with that 454 Limited. When I saw this for the first time, I'm like, what the hell is this? <sighs> All right, there we go. So go figure the one I practiced on right away. I got in like two minutes. This one, I don't know, like six minutes of dicking around with it. Anyway, this circle is gonna come out and then I can already see I'm dripping. And what I am dripping I'm willing to bet this is automatic transmission fluid, and I'm willing to bet it's probably 32 years old and came stock. So when I start backing this thing off, this is under tension. So I don't want to just fling it off. It's not crazy amount, but I'll back it off. This cap will come out, and then I'll be able to pull the spring out. Thank you. There is an O-ring on it on the bottom that's going to help seal. And then this spring will come out. I'm going to get a rag first. I don't really need to pull the spring out right away, but I know when I get this out, I'm going to turn it upside down over a drip pan. So that's why I want the spring to come out. Yeah, this is much redder. The other side I had much more black. This is automatic transmission fluid inside of here. So now, if they haven't been loosened yet, and at least you wanted to have this 12 millimeter tight on the top so we could use a two tooth puller, I think I want to loosen up my 14 here. I'll bring that way out. You don't have to pull it out all the way. And then it's a 12 up top, so I'll loosen that one. All right, neat. Oh, so I'm gonna dump. And then I'm just going to work it a little bit to get some of this out and then press my area. And this, oh, this one doesn't have a great spot to clamp it from. Well, anyway, I'm going to let it drip for a while. All right, now we're going to start disassembling the fork. So I got it here. It's fully collapsed. We have a dust seal, then there's a fork seal inside of it. Then there's a washer, then there's a bushing, then there's another bushing that's going to be on the stanchion itself. Then there's a damper rod, which has a spring on it. And there's a fork oil lock, and there's a damper rod bolt here. I'm gonna to need to undo that damper rod bolt to get the rest of it off. But the first thing I'm gonna do is actually pull off this dust seal. So normally, try not to nick up the paint too much. I usually have to use a razor blade to get it started just enough. That should be enough. And then I can get a screwdriver under it. And I wanna be careful. I don't mind nicking this part up. I wanna be very careful not to nick the stanchion up. If I did nick the stanchion up up here, it's not the end of the world because this isn't where the fork seal is actually going to be moving across. It's going to be further down here when I fully bring it out, but I still don't want to nick this stanchion up. So the dust seal comes off. Now 
I need to undo that six millimeter in the bottom. It may be loose enough without having to do this, but if you gotta put some extra tension on it, bring your spring back over. Sorry, you probably can't see that from there. So I can push my spring in, put my six in there, and I can see I'm loosening that bolt. This bolt will come out with a crush washer. Sometimes a crush washer comes out with it, and this one did. Sometimes a crush washer gets stuck inside of it. This one came out with it. So now I can pull that spring back out because I just used that for tension. The only fun part about doing a fork seal replacement is this part. Oh shit, I'm jumping the gun. There's a circlip that's gonna make that part not really fun. All right, there is a circlip right there. It usually gets a little bit rusty, crusty. Which side am I going? Hopefully you can see that. With a screwdriver, again, I don't wanna nick that stanchion up. I'll just lift that thing up right there. There's my circlip. Now I can do the fun part. So this part gets messy. Should only take a couple pulls, and then I will pull the stanchion apart from the lower. There it goes. All right, I wanna hang the lower up so that I can just drip some more stuff out of it, but I should mention this instead of cutting it out. That oil lock will have been in there. That sits on the end of the damper rod. All right, now at this point, there's nothing holding the damper rod in, so this will be loose in there, so I can actually turn this and catch it on its way out. So there is the spring, then there is a seal there, and then you've got the rest of the damper rod. I'm gonna set this off to the side for now. Now, what we've got on the end of this is what we're after. We're looking to replace this seal. Now you may elect to also change these bushings. Don't try to clean these, if you're, if you're reusing these things, don't go at them ferociously or with anything. They're Teflon coated and really just don't go at them with anything aggressive at all. Really just don't go at them. Just give them a light wipe if you're reusing them. I'm gonna be reusing both of these bushings. So what we've got, I'm gonna slide these things off. I'm gonna first slide the fork seal off then I'm gonna slide the washer, just being careful anytime I got metal on metal. And then this bushing is also going to come off. And I'm gonna be reusing this bushing. Both the washer and the bushing are gonna be reused. I am not changing this bushing here, so I'm just gonna leave it. That's as far as I'm going with this stanchion for taking it apart. At this point, it's everything just keeps getting covered in oil when you're working with you know, doing the fork seals, but it's really important to get this stanchion as clean as possible. Because when we slide the new seal over, we don't want anything nicking it up. So if it's oil on it, that's fine. If there's dead bugs, chips in it, or anything, there's ways we can minimize the risk. Sometimes you'll see a bunch of uh, corrosion or whatnot from where the triples were grabbing it. That's okay if it's not in the area of sliding, but we'll have to take extra precautions when we bring that uh, new fork seal over it. Now that we got things nice and decently cleaned up, it's time to start reassembling. Uh, I went through and I coated the inside of this with some 10 weight Maxima fluid. That's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a 130 millimeter air gap with some of that 10 weight Maxima. Um, you're not going to get it. Well, you can go for perfectly clean. I'm not. Uh, it's not even my bike. I just want to get it good enough. And I figured 32 year old fork seals weren't going to be the best. So. Um, I'm going to try something new. Normally I put a head mounted camera on for this, but I'm going to try this one because some people say they get fucking vertigo watching me do anything with that on. So first thing I'm going to do is end up putting the damper rod with the bump stop spring and its seal on it through. I'm going to bring that out through the bottom. I don't want anything to slam. There. And then the oil lock is going to go right over here so then i actually before i put anything else in i want to put the damper rod bolt with the crush washer if you have a new crush washer i would use it i thought i did i don't i'm going to reuse this one could get the torch out and try to re it but uh, i'm going to use this one so 
I wouldn't just go straight down because that oil lock will fall off. So I'm going to push this all the way through here, like so. And then if I grab my six millimeter, I should be able to get this started now. I don't need anything tight, but I should be able to get this started. If I can see it starting to go in, that'll be good enough. All right, so now it's starting to go up. I'm actually going to bring it, you know, to butt up against it, and then it'll just start spinning inside. All right, cool. Now we got to start pressing some stuff in. So what I am going to use for a lot of this is something I made up. You can get a fork seal driver. This one's for a 41 millimeter. This is not a 41 millimeter fork, so I cannot use this. This is a 36 millimeter fork. What I found, this is my 38 millimeter fork driver for my VF500F. This will not work. I did this when I pressed in some forks seals on a 454 Limited Kawasaki. What I did is take a uh, piece of one and a half inch, I think it's one and a half inch PVC pipe, and then I just took a grinding wheel to it and got this as smooth as possible, and this will fit in. First thing that's gonna go in, and I'm gonna be coating all of this in new fork oil. So I put some fork oil over here, and that is my lubricant for all of this, is that I'm just covering everything in fork oil not anything else and putting it in so this bushing is going in first and that's going to go down then my washer or the washer really doesn't need anything the washer is going to go over it now we're at the first point where i'm going to actually drive something in so if you have a specialized driver for it now's the time to shine i don't so what i use maybe i should point you up a little bit my PVC is going to go over the top of this. And then the way most fork, drill, fork drivers work is you just kind of take it and slam. I found this to hit the top of it seems cleaner and less likely to hurt something. So I'm just gonna tap it down now that I've got it there. That's all it needed. No slamming around. Okay, now is the big one the actual fork seal. This one I want to get covered and this is gonna, this is gonna fall over if I take my eyes off of it. <laughs> All right, now I'm ready to put the fork seal in. Some people will say that the fork seal that I'm about to put in is the devil. This is from an all balls kit. If you are doing this once, doing it righteously, doing it properly, put in an OEM kit or put in SKF fork seals. I'm trying to do this whole resurrection under $1,000 and my, I'm already at $950. I've put like 10 sets of all balls kits into different bikes. I have never had one fail, but I have had cheaper ones than this fail. Okay, just saying that now, if you're just doing this once, this is your pride and joy, put in a better fork seal than the one I'm putting in. These are directional. Um, I mean, just, just look up how they go in, but this is gonna be the bottom here. And then there's going to be writing and stuff it's kind of obvious if you've seen them, but they are directional. And if you get it upside down, well, it'll start pissing all over the place. So I'd mentioned earlier about making sure that the stanchion was as nick free as possible. For 32 years old, I can't believe how good a shape this one's in. I have put some seals on, on other bikes where there's been some shit all over the stanchion. So if that happens, go over the top with some cellophane and some red rubber grease and then slide it over. That'll keep it from getting nicked up. This one, I literally doesn't need it. So I'm just gonna put this over the top. And then I'm gonna slide it into place there, get it pushed in with my hands as far as it can go. And now I'm gonna bring my PVC piece that's cut out for a 36, bring that over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive it as far down as it'll go, and then also far enough that I can put this circ clip over it, that way the seal doesn't pop back out. So instead of using this as a driver, slam, 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 like I used to do, I'm gonna hit it with the uh, rubber mallet on top. Ah, almost there. And 
I'm not sure if you can see it, but now I can get that circlip in. That thing is there. Something I'm trying because these circlips have a habit of rusting. I just cleaned the rust up off of this. Now, I wouldn't put this valvoline grease on like to help the fork seal slide because it has some molybdenum in it and that can help swell rubber. But this is going on the top. These things can rust and I just figure if I put a coat of this on it, I'm going to give it a little bit of rust prevention that it didn't have before. And it maybe will last the next 32 years when the, when the next person comes and does these fork seals. I'm doing these fork seals for my dad. Um, I probably won't have a kid. Well, I have to. Well, I will have a kid because it turns out abortion is illegal as of yesterday. So I'll have a kid and he can do this in 32 years. I'll be dead. All right, so I'm just going to get it started. And one last thing I'm going to say about nicking this up. This is the point where you're at, you're, you're home free. This is the spot I have nicked a fork and I've just felt like an idiot. Don't go nuts and then just start stabbing at it. Go carefully and just get it, get it in there. All right, so that is clicked in. And the last thing I need is a dust seal, which isn't in my field. Oh yeah, it is in my field of view. All right, so this will go over the top. Dust seal isn't as important to be that careful with. I struggle with these all balls ones to get them to actually go in. Oh, this one, I might get lucky. This is actually why I brought that 41 millimeter driver over because I was practicing something earlier and I found that while well, this doesn't help with my fork seals, it sure helps with the dust seal. Okay, you don't need all those fancy tools. But I have them because I've done these over over the years and I've just slowly started accumulating some tools to make my life easier. But you can certainly do this shade tree mechanic with a whole lot less than I'm using. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is fill it with oil. But before you do that, what I would recommend, put that spring in the back or just put it loose in the back. To give it a better tighten. So like my damper rod bolt is loose here. Now I'm gonna push in and then I'm gonna tighten it so I don't get a leak when I'm filling it. We'll come back for a final tighten later, but that way it's not leaking out when we're filling it up. And then spring out because we're going to fill it and it's all the way down like this. All right, so I'm gonna run a 130 millimeter air gap, which is like roughly five inches on this. So the way you do this is this needs to be all the way depressed on it and then I have filled this with 200 milliliters of 10 weight maxima already and I've let this sit for like 20 minutes while I've done other things and just work it a couple times and this is a really familiar motion for me uh, work it a couple times so that all the air pockets end up you know working themselves out so that there isn't air sitting on the bottom of there that'll eventually end up taking capacity so I got like 200 milliliters in there what I found from the earlier one, and I think this is gonna take like roughly just under 300. So I'm gonna put another 100 in the top and then I'm gonna take some out. And the way I'm gonna take some out is using this, uh, I don't know if it's a Motion Pro tool or some other kind of tool, but you don't need that special kind of tool. What, what I used to do is actually just use a chopstick and I'd mark a level that I wanted on the chopstick, say five inches down, 130 millimeters down. And then I would just add fluid or remove fluid and try to get it exactly on that spot. So let's see how close I am. This tool basically is just, well, it's very basic. It just is attached to a syringe. I have it set to 130. If it pulls any fluid out, it means I'm over. So yes, I am over. And I'm just gonna pull fluid until I pull bubbles air bubbles. There it is. That way I know I'm at 130 millimeter air gap. And that's all the fluid in it. And that's all I'm going to do about the fluid. I would much prefer like what I just did to measure a height as opposed to a capacity. Capacity has so many variables that are just unaccounted for that it's just a, it, it just isn't smart. So you could pretty much just finish this fork on a standard conventional fork with a cap on the top 
but this doesn't because it's a Kawasaki, which Bert Gummer wouldn't approve of. So I am going to put my spring in through the top. Now this will be able to rise all the way up. I'm gonna put this back onto the bike. I'm gonna get that gear puller thing back out. Then I'm gonna put the cap back on, and then I'm gonna retighten the damper rod bolt, and then our fork's gonna be done. All right, fork coming through. I'm gonna send this thing up without the cap, up through the top. Thank you, puller. Wow, it's just going wild over there. All right, so I measured this earlier before I pulled them off, and I probably should have said that right away. I measured 14.2. Now, I just want to get this set, so I'll come back and adjust it later, but I just want this to be tight on here so that I can finish and seal up the fork, and I'll, I'll come back and adjust the height later. But basically, you should, you should measure the height of these, and these do need some because of the way that the, uh, they're not really clip-ons, I guess they're bolt-ons on this bike. Um, the way that they sit, they kind of sit over the top of these. So if you just get this one, this 12, good enough, that'll be fine. Then we've got this. That O-ring is going to be facing towards the bottom. That's going to sit like there. And then that circlip here, once we get it depressed in enough, that's going to go over the top. So I need that puller that just, this is, oh, there it is. Well, the good news is the circlip will go in a lot easier than it comes out. I'm trying to be proactive and put all my tools away. All I need is this. There, that's one side. That's the other. All right, so that is in now. This can come back out. And then the last thing, and I wouldn't, I don't recommend skipping this step. Now remember, I have not tightened up that damper rod bolt that tight on the bottom. Some people, and in some of my past videos, I'm gonna bring it up. Man, one guy like wanted to get me for fucking attempted murder on not using thread locker on that damper rod bolt. If you want to use thread locker on that damper rod bolt, do it. I don't, so I'm not gonna. Um, I'm gonna hold the lower, take my T-handle six, and just tighten this up as hand tight as tight as I can. I feel like that's going to be good enough. And then I'll come back to it later, check to see if it leaks at all. I don't expect it to leak. I don't think it will leak, but it could leak. And also, if you're worried about it killing you, put thread locker on it. I'm not going to. Uh, you watch this far. Thanks for watching.